Swapping faces in Photoshop is a lot easier than you think. Photoshop has this awesome feature that allows you to blend multiple images together to create seamless panoramas. Photoshop matches both tone and color to create smooth transitions between each photo. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use that tool to easily swap faces in Photoshop. Obviously, this example is a bit silly, but you can use this feature in your photography, if you have somebody who closes their eyes in a photo, you can find another photo of the same person and do a face swap so that the eyes are open in the image that you like. Let me show you how this technique works. Hi, I'm Isuz Ramirez from the Photoshop Training Channel. You can follow along with any image that you like, but if you want to follow along with the images that I'm going to use, then look down below in the description. I placed links to Adobe Stock, which is where I got these photos, and you can download the watermark version and follow along with me. You can obviously license the images if you like. Okay, let's get started. These are the two documents that I will work with. This photo of a man working out, and this is the face that we're going to replace over the other body. The first step is to select this guy's face and we're going to do so by using the lasso tool. The lasso tool allows us to freehand a selection. So I'm just going to freehand the selection around his face and notice that I'm just being very loose at the moment. You don't have to be precise at all at this step. If you missed an area, you can hold shift and click and drag to add to the selection. If you make a mistake and you accidentally add an area that you didn't intend to, you can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click and drag to subtract from the selection. Again, I was very loose, no need to be precise at this moment. Then I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, Control C on Windows to copy, that's Command C on the Mac, and I'm going to click on the tab to go back into our working document, and I'll paste by pressing Control V, Command V on the Mac, and there's his face. Next, we need to match this face onto the face of our model, and we're going to do so by selecting the Move tool, clicking and dragging up, and then I'm going to zoom in. You can zoom in by pressing the Z key and clicking to zoom in. If you're zoomed in really close and you want to move into another area, you can hold down the H key, click, drag the box to another area, release, and Photoshop zooms back in. So this is a quick way of zooming in and out. In this case, that is a little too close, so I'm going to zoom back out. You can zoom out by holding Alt, Option on the Mac, and scrolling down on the mouse wheel. Next, reduce the opacity of this face layer so that you can better match it to the face below. In Photoshop, there's a really cool feature. You can actually click and drag on the label to make an adjustment to any input box. You don't have to use the drop down or slider if you don't want to. And now you can see through this layer, which is the face, and I'll call it face just so that we know what we're working with. And we're going to match this face onto the face below. To do so, select the move tool so that you can move the face around and place it accordingly. And when matching faces, it's always a good idea to use a reference point. Generally speaking, eyes make a fantastic reference point. In this case, I'm going to use this right eye, but in your image, you can use the left one if you prefer. Then I'm going to press Control T, Command T to transform to make sure that I have my transformation handles. Also, if you're on the Creative Cloud, make sure that you click on this checkbox to enable the reference point, also known as the pivot point. If you're in an older version of Photoshop, don't worry about it. It's always on. You cannot disable it. But anyway, click and drag the reference point over into the corner of the right eye. And if I disable this face layer, you'll see that it matches the layer below. And actually, by disabling the layer, I reset it the reference point. So I'm going to click and drag it back up into that same spot. And I'm going to hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click and drag to scale that in. Depending on your version of Photoshop and what settings you have, you may need to hold the Shift key to scale in proportion. Just make sure that you scale proportionately and that you match the eyes in both layers. Then we need to transform this second face to get it as close as we can to the original. And we're going to do so by pressing Control T, Command T to transform, right clicking and selecting warp. In the new version of Photoshop, this warp is completely different than in older versions. Before you only had a three by three grid, but now you can customize the grid however you like. And I will use a custom grid to adjust the face. If you're in an older version of Photoshop, then you'll be stuck with a 3x3 grid, but that's okay, just distort the image using those handles. 
And actually, this technique should work with Photoshop CS6 at the very least. About six years ago, when I first started this YouTube channel, I made a tutorial with the same technique and it worked with Photoshop CS6. So I know it works and that video is still there if you would like to watch it. You can use these three split buttons to cut up your grid into different sections. I'm going to select this vertical button and then I'll add a split right in the middle of his face, splitting the face in half. And I can click on this point on top, hold shift, click on the point on the bottom, and then move both points at the same time to adjust the tilt of the face. Remember to keep your adjustments subtle. Extreme adjustments will not look realistic. If you need to, you can add more splits. For example, you can add a horizontal split. You can click on the horizontal split button and add it just above his eyebrow and click and drag on these top handles to adjust his forehead. Now adjust the points at the bottom. Make sure that none of the points are selected, meaning that they're not filled in. If you have a point that's filled in, simply hold shift and click on it. Then hold shift again and click and drag to make a selection around the three points at the bottom. And I can click and drag this up. If I need to, I can hover into one of the corners so that I could scale this in. I don't need to do that in this case, so I'm just going to press Control Z, Command Z to undo. I could also rotate it. So you have those options if you need it in your face swap. In this case, I'm just gonna click and drag up a bit. And I'm going to create one more horizontal split and I'll do it right here, right above his mouth. And I'll, once again, make sure that no other point is selected and click and drag to select these three points and drag this down just a bit, just so that his nose matches and that his mouth matches as well. At this point, you can reduce the opacity to make sure that the face you're working on matches with the face below. In this case, I think we've done a good job. Before moving on, I would like to show you one cool trick. If you select this first split button, it will create both a horizontal and vertical split. As you can see from the preview when I hover over the grid, if you click on the same button, it will disable the tool. But when you hover over the grid, if you hold the Alt key on Windows option on the Mac, you'll be able to create that same vertical and horizontal split. So that is a keyboard shortcut to quickly adding those splits. For now, I'm just going to click on the check mark to commit the changes, and I'm going to increase the opacity by dragging the label to the right. Next, create a layer mask by clicking on a new layer mask icon. A layer mask allows you to hide pixels when you paint over it with black. Let me pan just a little bit, then select the move tool and make sure that you click on this icon to enable the brush settings. And from here, make sure that the hardness is set to 100% and also bring the spacing down to 1% and make black your foreground color so that when you paint on this layer mask, you hide pixels. Next, brush over the areas that you do not want to include in the blend. In other words, I'm making sure that no pixels of his face are going over his hair and in areas like that, making sure that I match the jawline as best as I can. But notice that even at this point, I'm not being too precise at all. I'm just roughly getting the shape of the face like so. And I'm noticing that he has a bright highlight here on his forehead and that probably won't look good in the blend. So I'm just going to delete that and use the original model's forehead for the blend, like so. Then you can press X on the keyboard to swap your foreground and background color, reduce the size of the brush by tapping on the left bracket key on the keyboard, and then painting over his eyebrow here just to round off that area, just so I don't have sharp edges that might make the composite look unrealistic. I'm gonna reveal more pixels down here on his chin, and I'm gonna continue working on his jawline. As you're working, you can go back into the layers panel and disable and enable the face layer so that you can see what areas you're missing. It looks like I need a little more work here. So you can press X on the keyboard to swap the foreground and background color. Now that black is a foreground color, paint on the side of his face to hide these pixels. And now that I'm looking at it, I think the blend will work better if we push these pixels in. And I'm also gonna fine tune the other side of his face. Once you've gotten to this point, all you need to do is right click on the layer mask and apply the layer mask. We need to actually delete those pixels for this to work. Then I'm going to click on our models layer, press Control J on Windows, Command J on the Mac to duplicate, and I'm going to disable the original layer. Next, I'm gonna select the pixels around this face. To do so, 
Hold Control on Windows, Command on the Mac, and click on the face layer thumbnail, and that will load a selection around his face. Then click on the eye icon to hide that layer and reveal the copy of the background. Then go into Select, Modify, Contract, and this command allows you to make selections smaller, and you want to do so because you want pixels to overlap when we create the blend. I'm going to use 5 pixels, but you may need to use a larger value if you're working on larger images. I'll press OK. With this background copy selected, all I'm going to do now is hit the backspace key on Windows, the delete key on the Mac, and notice that we've deleted the pixels on this layer. Also notice that when I enable the face layer, now there is a gap in between the selection and the edge of the layer. That's what you want. Next, hold Shift and click on the face layer to select both layers. Then I'm going to go into Edit, Auto Blend Layers, and make sure that you have Panorama and these two checkboxes selected. Seamless Tones and Colors allows Photoshop to adjust the brightness and colors of the image to create a better match. And this second checkbox allows Photoshop to use content-aware fill in areas where there are transparent pixels. Then press OK. And notice that almost like magic, Photoshop made a very convincing face swap with just a few clicks. I'm going to press Ctrl D on Windows, Command D on the Mac to deselect, and I'm going to double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. Notice what Photoshop did here. It kept our original layers and it created a new face merge layer. And you can actually see here that we had some transparent pixels and Photoshop used content aware fill to generate the pixels in that area. So that's why you needed to check that content aware fill checkbox. By the way, if you're in an older version of Photoshop, you will not have access to the content aware fill checkbox. So you will have to remove those transparent areas with the healing brush tool. Next, let me show you how to fix a problem that comes up when you do your face swaps. Notice that when I compare the new merged layer to the original image, the luminance values and the colors shift a bit. This happens because Photoshop adjusted those values to create the blend. If you don't like the luminosity shift over the entire image, what you can do is simply highlight that face merge layer, hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click on the layer mask icon to create an inverted layer mask, a mask that is completely black which will hide all the pixels in that layer, but then you can use the brush tool to selectively bring pixels back. So I'll select the brush tool, click on this drop down, and bring the hardness down so that we can have a soft edge and make sure that you have white as your foreground color. So you can just click on this icon and you can just start painting in those pixels. I'm making the brush a little bit larger by tapping on the right bracket key on the keyboard. And you can just selectively bring back the pixels from that layer. And now you can disable and enable this layer and you'll see that the face swap only affected the face and not the rest of the image. Next, I would recommend that you try out this technique with your own photos. Try placing yourself in a movie poster or maybe even a magazine. If you do try this technique, then don't forget to share your results on Instagram with the hashtag PTCVids. I would love to see what you come up with. And if you enjoy this video, then you'll probably like my video on hair swapping. I'll place a link down below in the description so you can check it out right after this tutorial. Also, if this is your first time at the Photoshop training channel, then don't forget to click on that subscribe and notification button so that you don't miss any new Photoshop tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again in the next video.